If you have ever looked at other people's NixOS configurations, or just any flakes in general, you have undoubtedly stumbled upon Flake Ports, a modular flake framework powering flakes of some of the coolest members of the Nix community. Some find it irreplaceable, some unnecessary, and many just don't understand what it does at all. And so in this video, we will take a closer look at how it works, but before we begin, I must say that to understand Flake Ports, you very much do need to have a basic understanding of flakes, so if you don't know what flake inputs and outputs are, check out this video linked in the description. So without further ado, let's begin. Starting with the official definition, which states that Flake Ports provides the options that represent standard Flake attributes and establishes a way of working with system. A bit too technical, we'll get back to it in a moment. And then there's also this example Flake with some crazy structure. So why would you want this instead of writing a normal Flake? I think the best way to understand it is by coming up with an example ourselves. So here we have a super basic Nix Flake, which exposes a package for 64-bit Linux systems, and also a development shell with this same package. Pretty standard situation. But now, let's say we wanted to extend our flake to also support other major system architectures. We are of course not going to duplicate each attribute manually, so instead, we could either, god forbid, use flake utils, or come up with our own custom logic, both of which will do the trick for smaller flakes, but will not scale well, leading to the also common pattern where a flake goes on to grow into several files, with each file having its own architecture, usually resulting in a ton of custom hard to read glue logic just to connect all of them together, passing around self and inputs turning the flake into monolithic mess. So instead of this, what if we could just modularize our outputs and turn some, or even all the files into self-contained outputs modules. Modules readable without extra context, modules with easy access to each other. Parts of your flake, if you will. To do it, we will start with a plain flake, where we include flake parts in the inputs, pass it to the outputs, and call the main library function makeFlake, passing it a set with our inputs, and our very first module. This is basically how Flake Parts boilerplate looks, so feel free to reuse it for any new projects. And now, following the regular Flake Parts structure, let's include our supported systems in the systems attribute, and then add a persystem attribute which is responsible for system-specific outputs. Here we can include our package, in the end it will be exposed for each system just like in a normal Flake, and also our shell. To pass the package to the shell, we can simply use the self prime parameter from the persistent function, which acts just like Flake's regular self, but with system preselected, allowing us to get the package from our Flake in a clean declarative way. As you can see, we have just rewritten our Flake from the beginning of the video with Flake ports. But this was only the first step, because now we can actually modularize it. And to do it, just like with NixOS or Home Manager modules, all we have to do is add the imports attribute move our persistent packages and shells into separate files, and include them in the imports, separating concerns of every file while keeping them readable without any extra context. Every file is just little outputs, you open it, and immediately understand what it does. And for an even better example, let's also try to expose a NixOS configuration. Create another module, add it to the Flake imports, and now NixOS configurations do not live in a system-specific attribute, so we will put ours in Flake instead of per system. In the end, this attribute will expose everything at the top level of the outputs. And since the NixOS system function comes from Nix packages, we will also request inputs in the parameter set at the top, so we can access Nix packages from there. Notice how this also makes our module look a lot like your average NixOS module. But the structure is of course not the only similarity, because just like NixOS, Flake Parts also comes with its own set of options. And what are these options? Well, we have actually already used some of them throughout this video. And that is because Flake Parts explicitly defines all standard Flake outputs as options. Your shells are options, your packages are options, and all your NixOS configurations and modules are all options. Making them type safe, bringing NixOS like error messages to your flakes, and also allowing automatic merging of these options from different modules. Meaning just like NixOS will merge environment.system packages options defined in two different modules, Flake Parts will merge two whole NixOS modules with the same name from two different Flake Parts modules. All of this is what options that represent standard Flake attributes in the definition refers to. 
But there is of course a lot more to it, because you can also define your own options, as well as import modules extending flake parts with options for Home Manager, DevEnv and dozens of other Nix projects, so I highly encourage you to try out flake parts, because I promise it all makes a lot more sense once you try it out yourself. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, and especially all the great monthly supporters, of which we have one new member, so thanks Danny for signing up. Your support is invaluable. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.